that since I am someone, as some of you know, who tends to do a lot, is very busy and active, I really needed to make sure I wasn't flying through life. There is a book whose title captures this, The One Who Is Not Busy. If you've not read it, look it up. I needed to stop, to be present, and in fact, to just be rather than do all the time. Meditation provides me with that simplicity, with that be. I'm also a moderately complicated person, so the simplicity of this form of meditation was also feeling. And finally, I tend to be a cognitive task-oriented kind of person, so to complement that, or perhaps to keep it in its place, I practice meditation, the letting go of all my thoughts, distractions, plans, and just being in the presence of what I believe to be the eternal now, the one who is. As I said a moment ago, I do this every morning. Don't tell the World Community for Christian Meditations that I haven't managed to fit it into my evening. <laughs> I'm working on that. I rise typically at 5.30, and after reading the excerpt for the day in the book, Silence and Stillness in Every Season, Daily Readings with John Main, I then set my clock's gentle alarm for 30 minutes and begin my meditation. After that, I read from Living with Christ the readings of the liturgy for that day, and my day begins which leads me to the third and final section of my reflection, which you will be relieved to know is the shortest. Justice, meditation, and meaning. Why do I believe that the essential calls to both justice and meditation are related? The short answer is I believe they are two sides of a coin. The longer answer is centered in the third word of the section, meaning. It is because justice and meditation infuse each other that I find meaning in who I am and what I do. For me, to do justice without being rooted in prayer in general, and in meditation in particular, is a formula for self-righteousness, to which I am, alas, prone. You can get caught up in causes and believe that you must be all and give all if real change is to occur. I need to root myself each day and many times during that day, those many meditations, in the eternal now, if I am to avoid what some people call the Messiah complex, that mistaken notion that one individual is all that matters, rather than that the work we do in groups is what really matters. To pray and meditate without struggling for justice is a formula for deserting my vocation as a committed Christian in the world. We are called to bring our gifts to whatever arenas we are in, to help make this world of ours a more humane, a more peaceful, and a more just world. It is a struggle. The forces of evil are strong. The resources we have are limited. Our vision may be too small. But to be faith-filled people, we need to act on that faith, to make it more than simply words. We must translate it into action for our brothers and sisters across this planet of ours. One of the important sources of inspiration for me that captures this essential relationship of justice, meditation, and meaning is from the prophet Micah in chapter 6, verse 8 of that book in the Old Testament, and I will close with it. This is what Yahweh asks of you, only this, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I wish you well and hope we can join each other in the struggle for justice that is rooted in meditation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning part of the conversation, so it's your turn mm -hmm. to uh, say. So maybe if you have a comment, a question, if you could just say your name so everybody can kind of get to know. My name is Carol Sargent, and I have seen you in action in social justice settings. And one of the uh, questions that I have involves the connection of meditation to social justice because you can meditate and they're still hungry. You can give money and they're still hungry. You can work, you can burn yourself out, or you can reserve your energy and they're still hungry. And how do you get around that? How do you deal with that? I will emphasize the title again, The Struggle, <laughs> because I think it is Carol. Yeah. I, I, what I have come to believe is that if I'm not centered, I, I could totally
totally go off the deep end in thinking I'm saving the world and, and, and not do anything really constructive. Uh, I, I hold, I hope I hold the faces of hungry people or whatever your favorite image is in front of me to motivate me to work, to not forget that all of these busy things that I do must eventually have something to do with making this world better, which means there will be fewer hungry people. Mm -hmm. And that can happen in a variety of ways. I do believe money matters. Uh, those of you who know us at the center know that we've been collecting money for Haiti, for example. We've uh, collected over $45,000, which are, is being given to three different organizations. I do believe money matters. Mm -hmm. I believe time matters, that we have to tithe, if you want, some time so that we're actively engaged. I am an educator, as you know, Carol, so for me it's building structures that allow people to have opportunities to get off the hilltop, for example or out of this country, for example, I mean, participating in some of you. There, for me, there is no one answer. One of the reasons I haven't figured out how to get my meditation in the evening is honestly, I try to do the exam, and I try to reflect on my day and think about what, what did happen, to thank God for the good things, to wonder what might I have done differently or better, and then to remember the purposes for what it is. I really am prone to a messiah complex. I hope the tape is off now. I don't want to say this again. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to watch that. I have to remind myself that it is groups. It is lots of people all around the world. They talk about pockets of possibility all over. And I want to lift them up and remind myself that even though I don't know them, just like I didn't know those pagan babies, mm -hmm. there are other people who have this vision and are doing what they can in a variety of ways to reduce the number of money, to reduce the possibility of violence. And that my little spark, I hope, is part of a larger flame. It sounds like the name of a band of taking babies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about that later. <laughs> it was hard to believe, I understand now. That we made good sense in fourth grade. <laughs> Other thoughts about your own experiences and how you relate justice and meditation? Um, I, there's a lot of reference to um, being witness to, and I wonder if you could talk to that and how that fits in both with meditation and justice for you. Know well, I'll attempt yeah. an answer. You tell me if I've got okay. the ballpark. Um, I love the fact that you would raise the, the question. Um, I learned from Dorothy Day, people have learned from different people that we're not called to success, we're called to witness. We're not called to the end result, we're called to the journey. Uh, and I think it's on, on both sides that um, I want some people to know that I'm a meditator. Not for some people that wouldn't matter, I'm sure you all know that. But I don't talk about it all the time. I'm grateful for this opportunity, Katie and Jane. But I try to help people who especially are in the justice world understand that Burnout is a serious issue, and that if we are really going to be in the struggle for the long haul, I know of no finer way than to make sure you're rooted. And for me, meditation is the key daily rootedness that helps me not go flying off uh, to save the world, but reminds me. One of my images, this is a black bag, Susie, but you notice how the pedals go out and then back and out and back, so there's a core. It, to me, that the meditation is the core, and you go out to do the works of justice, and hopefully we're building something wonderful. But the pedals will fall off <coughs> if my core isn't strong. This is a very strong pen, so don't worry about the pen. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's important that some people in, in, in the justice work understand why I'm committed to meditation. It's also incredibly important for me that people who meditate understand that I do see them as two sides of the coin. I don't know how you separate prayer in general meditation from doing justice. I don't. They are two sides of the coin for me. And to strip one of the other is to strip both. So now the only question I have about witness is it can feed into my, Karen showed you this, Messiah complex, you know, isn't she cool? You know, gee, she does all these great things. So you, I, I downplay that part of the witness in, in, and focus instead about, it's not the success part, it's that, that we are in the journey. Uh, one of my favorite, I teach Justice and Peace Studies here at Georgetown. One of my favorite uh, heroes, mentors, symbolically in this field, 